Hey guys, Mel the Trade Tutor back in the studio and back with a technical tutorial. Yes, we are in the hills, rocks and cliffs playlist and we're working on a new sort of mounting technique. Well, it's not really a new technique, it's been around for ages, but it's new to the channel and I thought I'd show it you. Now, we're going to be covering stratified rock. Now, this is the rock with layers, okay? Quite common, you see it in sandstony areas such as, you know, the American West and uh, certain places in Africa and in the Far East. Okay, and it's where, you know, you get erosion due to like water, wind, sand, and you get the layered effect on the rocks. But it's also quite common in glacial rocks, which are quite common in Northern Europe. And we've got some rocks like that quite close to us. So this is the technique I'm going to be going. I'm going to be going for the glacial ones, which have more of a slant to them. So with that in mind, shall we crack on? Right, let's crack on. So with this technique, our main building material is going to be HD foam. And this is perfect for all your HD foam scraps because it's because you need lots of little layers. It's a bit wasteful for your big sheets unless you plan on doing a lot of them and you get the sheets specifically. But if you build up a lot of scrap, much like me and I do, yeah, save it. And then when you've got enough, this is the perfect technique for, for it. Now, I'm starting off with an EPVC base. Okay, uh, expanded PVC foam board links the description down below I've cut out the shape I want yeah and then all I've done is I've beveled it with a knife and then just sanded it down okay and that's going to be our base now when you're building this as you can see this isn't a full circle it's a half circle it's a table edge piece so it's designed to go up against the edge of a table now when it comes to building this the first thing that I want to do is put the back on you don't need a back on these if they're going on the table edge you can just clean them with a knife and fill gaps and stuff like that I'm a bit picky and I like a nice clean shaped back for it so for that what I've got is I've got a piece of blue foam that's slightly bigger and slightly taller than where I want it to be I, I intend to cut it back okay so my next job is I need to fix this on now you can use PVA when building the, these pieces. Yeah, PVA and pins works perfectly fine. For speed, I've got the old hot glue because it's just gonna allow me to get these pieces down and quicker. This technique, it's about layering lots of little different bits, so we need to crack on, yeah? And also, it dries instantly, so I'm not fiddling about, I don't need to worry about moving bits as I mess around with other bits. But first, this bit. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hot glue it onto there, and then I'm just gonna use this tiny little corner yeah I'm going to glue it into there just to hold it up straight okay so let me get that done and I'll be back once it is and so that's the back glued on and as you can see nice stable and I very quickly just ran a blade just catch any little x the glue blobs that sort of you know squidge out I just clean those up with a knife yeah and so we have we've got our back it's lined up it's time to actually start doing our rock faces now for this we're using all our bits of scrap and I've got a few here we're going to be building it up as I said we're going to be doing it in sort of a slanted layer so rather than doing a simple layer and building it up in layers like we would with like sandstone erosion yeah we're going to be doing more glacial so we're going to try and angle it now I know in the comments I'm going to get loads of people who know more about this sort of stuff than me correcting me please do I'm always up for learning guys so if I get anything wrong or I'm well off get it in the comments let me know and point me in the direction of good resources for learning these things because I'm always up for learning much like you guys. Anyway, right, let's crack on. So, got my hot glue. I've got my bits, and because I want it sloped, I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start on one end, build it up and layer it down this way, yeah? I've got all my scraps, and all I'm gonna do is very quickly, I'm gonna put some hot glue down, yeah? And I've broken this bit, I'm just gonna squidge this in, I'm gonna put it there, yeah? And that'll give me a first step. Next one, yeah, come along, yeah? I'm gonna get something like this one, you can tell I've already pre-snapped these to sort of show you the layers. And we've got it to about there. Now, as I'm doing this, things I'm conscious of is I need to maintain this space around here. Yeah, that's my beveled edge for my clump foliage and yeah, my, my, my flock and that sort of stuff. Don't take it all the way up to the right edge, much like with any other hill. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I've got this bit. I'm going to snap that there, snap that there, say. Yeah, that'll go there quite well. Yeah, so I'm just gonna run some glue between the two of these. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, why are you using hot glue when it melts polystyrene? 
yeah? And yes, it does melt polystyrene, but generally, It'll melt it a little, but it'll still stick, which is what you're after. So it's not really a problem. Okay, so we go along another bit here. Yeah, let's see if we can fit that in somehow. That's a bit sharp, so you can break these. You can cut them with a knife. A lot of people like cutting them with a knife. I'm more of a snapper, to be truthful. Yeah, so move that onto there. A bit more hot glue on that. That has melted through. Now. Struggle a little bit with the hot glue because it's getting a bit too hot. Now, if you get your hot glue a bit too hot and it's melting through your polystyrene, it's dead simple to sort. One, you can unplug it, let it cool down a bit so the glue gets a little bit cooler. It gets very hot the longer it's been plugged in, so giving it a break makes it a little bit more workable. The other thing is, don't put large blobs of glue down. Spread it out, yeah, that cools quicker so it won't melt the polystyrene as quick. And on top of that, blow on it. So. Yeah, if I do this one very quickly, yeah, that'll help stop it melting and then I can come in and I can put that somewhere like there, bringing it up to that edge there, yeah, and that will stick, yeah. It's just about managing that hot glue temperature. If it gets too hot, you'll tell because it'll just melt straight through your polystyrene. So, with that and that slight adjustment there, yeah, let's crack on. So, once again, just breaking bits, and I'm just looking at where I can layer these bits to make my piece come together. Now, don't worry about it being a little bit fiddly. Quite often, as you build it up, you'll have lots of little gaps and that sort of thing. If I bring it up to the close cam, you can sort of see them there. Okay, don't worry about it. Yeah, we're gonna fill this with filler when it's all sorted anyway. Now, the other thing you can notice, if I bring it back to the close cam, is I'm starting to get my layers in, my slanted layers. Yeah, first ones we sort of stepped up in height because we needed to build that sort of, build the substructure for the layers. Now, we've done that. Now, we're working on actually building the layers in. Okay, and as you can see, the first one's going in along there, yeah, into there. And I will keep building this up and building layers on. Yeah, so with that in mind, Mel's got his hot glue gun. Time to get cracked on. Now, a quick tip as you're going, what do you call it? As you can see, I've completed my first layer. Okay, you can sort of see it building up there. Now, the important thing to remember is don't just glue the pieces on top of each other, yeah? Make sure you put some glue down the side and against the edges so it is actually fixed against this back piece. Otherwise, you'll end up with your hill building up, so to speak, and then, you know, this bit wobbling at the back, and you don't want that. So, as you can see, yeah, my layer is coming together nicely. I'm gonna take this up probably about another inch, which will give me an inch, inch and a half off here, and probably about two inches, two and a half inches on this side, yeah? So, yeah, that was your tip, cracking on. Another quick tip for you is, obviously, as you build up your layers, okay, we've got a gap forming in the back here. And this can lead to sort of wobbliness and stuff like that and problems when you're putting everything together. So what you can do is, if you've got some offcuts that just don't really fit anywhere, yeah, you can just drop these in, yeah, and these will work just as basically space fillers. So one there, yeah, put another one there, Wedge that in, yeah, and then put another one there. Remember, as you're doing your space fillers, if they go up against the back, make sure to put some hot glue on there so they can actually fix it and support against the back. So that's the filling. You'll have lots of little bits left over, as you can see, yeah, and so just fill these gaps with those and you'll be able to stack your pieces quite well. Right, better get cracked on with some more layers. And another quick tip for you guys. If I should put it together, you get this situation where you get a large overhang. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, you should be able to see that. Yeah, there you go, that large overhang there. Don't worry about it, okay? All you gotta do, because it's thin foam, is come in and just break it off, yeah? Another quick tip for you is, as you're putting your hot glue on, so let's say I wanna put this one there, yeah? Put your hot glue down, yeah, just like that. And when you come to apply it, put 
the edge down first and then squeeze down. Yeah, so edge down first and squeeze down towards the back. And what you're doing in this situation is that wet hot glue, you're forcing it along the back. If you put it down straight, it'll squidge out like a sandwich that you squish down and it'll come out out the front and you'll end up with hot glue blobs out the front. If you look at mine, there's no hot glue blobs out the front and that's because I'm putting them down on the edge and I'm flattening them back down, okay? And that's giving me, basically it's squeezing the glue out the back, yeah, and giving me a nice clean layered frontage. So, cracking on. Now the next tip for you is, feel free to sort of alternate your, what you call it, your material thickness, okay? Right now I'm just using, uh, what you call it, the, the thin five mil sheets, but I've got 10 mil, so what I'm doing is I'm coming in with my 10 mil, yeah, I'm doing a thicker layer. The layers on stratified stuff wouldn't be uniform. They do change and that sort of stuff. Yeah, and so that's why I'm using a thicker layer like this, okay, to sort of break it up a bit, if you know what I mean. So that one's gonna come in there, that'll go there. Yeah, once again, oh, I've got a bit of a blob there. Clean that off. <laughs> Silly Billy. Yeah, and drop this one in here. To there. So, and like I say, that extra thickness layer will really help to sort of break up and make it a little bit more believable. I mean, what you can do, if you're totally hardcore, yeah, another blob, get rid of that, yeah, is you can actually come along with a blade and shape these down a little. So, for example, if I come along like this, yeah, I've got this long straight along here, yeah, if I come along with my blade, and because it's hot glue, it's going to get fiddly and messy. But if I come along like that, and I slope that to there, yeah, I can bring another slope in straight across the top of that, which is what I'm going to do. Yeah, so, cracking on time. Now, I'm at the stage where it's time to start levelling things off. So, if we look at my piece, yeah, I've got about just over an inch there. I've got some nice layers going all the way up and around to about two and a half inches there, which is what I wanted at the start. But obviously, we've got a load of gaps there. Now, I've filled my supports up so they're roughly the right level, but we need to put a topper on it. And for that, I've got a piece of scrap foam. And all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put this on top of there, yeah, like that, so it goes over the lot. I'm gonna turn it on its side yeah, so I can see the rough shape, and then with my little wooden pencil, yeah, I'm just gonna go around it. Yeah, and by doing that, what I end up with is the outline of the hill. Next job, just dead simple with a blade. I'll use a blade for this because we'll be trimming it down afterwards. Yeah, and I'm not following it precisely because we don't want it to be perfect. Yeah, but cut that out, gives us that, okay, and if we come along to our hill, here we go, <laughs> a moment of truth, yeah, that'll sit on there beautifully. It's almost like I've done this before, isn't it? So my next job is I need to run some hot glue along here and along this edge so I can fix it to there. Okay, once that's fixed down, what I'll be doing is I'll just be getting a few other random pieces and just adding them onto the top so we haven't got like a really flat top. We've actually got more undulating terrain. Yeah, so, cracking on time. Now we've reached the stage where our topper is on and we've done our sort of top collection of bricks. And I've just added a few extra in, just iggledy-piggledy, just to break it up a bit so it's a bit more interesting when we paint it. I didn't want a completely flat top. Yeah, and I wanted places where models could stand, okay? But obviously, if you look at it, yeah, we've still got this bit, which is a bit of an issue. Not really, yeah? All we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it like that. We're gonna use our blade. Okay, and what we're going to do is just come along and I'm going to start on this side. Yeah, I'm just going to cut bits off yeah, to make it a little bit more in line with the edge. So if I bring it round like that, 
you can see how I've taken that up to the edge and we'll blend this edge in shortly. But what I've got to do is I've got to take the top off here. Yeah, and I've got to take this edge round here. And once it's done, we'll be left with the perfect profile of the hill. Right, let me get that done. And now that's done, as you can see, it's really starting to come together. Yeah, simple cut round, and then with a blade, just coming along and sort of cutting flat with my pieces. Yeah, cutting the wedges out like that. Very simply done. Yeah, lovely technique. And at the same time, I've cut into some of these top pieces as well, just to change them up so they're not just all perfectly five mil. But we've got some edges that are sticking out here and they're quite sharp. Okay, so what I wanna do is very quickly, just come along with a blade, yeah, and sort of bevel these down a bit, yeah. I don't have to get all of them, just the most prominent ones. Okay, just so it doesn't look like it's a load of five mil foam that's just been snapped. Okay, and like I say, you don't need to do all of them, just the prominent ones, okay. Now, when you reach a point where you're struggling because of where they are and the angle and all that sort of stuff, swap over, go to something like a sanding block or something like that, because you can just come along, yeah, and just rub it around all the edges. It'll get, bits of the sanding block will come off because that's the sanding block. Yeah, sandpaper will work just as well. Yeah, but this will give you a more natural edge. So, you've either got sandpaper or blade, but either way, just take those sharp edges off, okay? So I'll get cracked on with the last few bits on this. It's almost done, there's only a few others. So I'll get cracked on with that, and then I'll bring it back. And with the sanding done, yeah, we have got our basic sh shape of our rock <laughs> yeah, all done. So, as you can see, there you go. We've got some beautiful layers on that. They look realistic. Now, but we do have a lot of gaps, okay? And gaps need filling. So what do we fill them with? Filler. Yeah, yeah, so filler, uh, joint compound, all that sort of stuff, for information down below. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get it on my fingers, I'm just gonna spread it round it. I've also got a hog's hair brush, okay, and I'm gonna use this to shove, to sort of get it in the corners. And all I'm trying to do is just seal it into one simple piece. Now, arms need to be pulled up because I'm gonna get my fingers wet and sticky. It's gonna get a bit messy, but then again, that's half the fun, isn't it? Yeah, so if I grab my filler, yeah, I am literally just grabbing a wedge and all I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and I'm looking where I've got gaps and I'm just filling gaps. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to help it all join together. Yeah, it'll help it give it more of a rock texture look. Yeah, the important thing is you really do push this filler in. Yeah. Don't leave it as big blobs on the surface. Yeah, so. I'll come around there. Yeah. So if I show you that, that's what it's looking like right now. And obviously I'd leave this till the later stage, but I'll do it very quickly so you can see what I'm doing. Got my brush. And all I'm going to do with my brush is whenever I see it's sort of like, it goes sort of, See there where my fingers have made it smooth in the hollow, yeah? All I'm going to do is with my brush, come in and just dig some of that out. Yeah? Just to get that layered look back again. And like I say, at the same time, as you push it out and manipulate it and that sort of stuff, what you also get is you see how it's starting to take the stipple, yeah? So that's my next job, just forcing the filler all over this, clean up the excess and give it a little bit of a, a stipply look. Yeah, and if I do that, it'll look beautiful. So I'm gonna crack on with that and I'll bring that back when it's done. So that's the filler stage done, and as you can see, yeah, it is looking awesome. I've filled in all those gaps, I've broken up the smooth bits, 
you know, just simply going in. If you go longitudinal, i.e. along with the lines, what you get is you get straight, like streaks in, in the filler, which really work with the piece, yeah? So, yeah, just clean the filler off, get your definition done, and then, you know, it really does come together. Now, the final thing I want to do, and I'm doing this while the filler's still wet, I should really wait till it dries, but you're okay, is I've got some uh, two sorts of grit, yeah, a medium one and a fine one. I've got some PVA on a bit of foam there, and I'm just gonna grab my brush. I'm just gonna brush the base, yeah, with some PVA. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some grit on. I should be doing this on newspaper and that sort of stuff, but you know me. Yeah, so very simply, grab some of that. Yeah, around there. Some of that. Doesn't have to be everywhere on this because it's going to get painted and flocked anyway. Yeah. Give that a bit of a, a brush off. Yeah, I don't want too much of that on the rocks. And then at the same time, yeah, just at the top here, get a bit, more, bit of our PVA. And just where it's sort of spread out a bit, yeah, we're going to use it to break this up. One of the key things that I'm trying to do here is my join line between that flat back, back piece and the one before, I'm trying to break that up a little. Yeah, sort of hide that away. Most of the places I've managed to sand it, fill it, and that sort of stuff, it looks okay. But there are places where it's not brilliant and it is showing. So, by simply coming along, there with my old bits of sand, yeah, I can blend those out and, yeah, as you can see, they disappear quite nicely. <sighs> now, that will all stick down, but I need to wait for this to completely dry. So, I'll give you some pics and then we'll come back and get it painted up, yeah? So our piece is all dry now, and if we take a look at the camera, doesn't it look beautiful? Okay, straight off you can see how the filler has filled in all those little gaps, has blended the edges, and gives us that lovely stratified look. Okay, quick look at the top, you can see all the my sort of crevices. What I have done is very quickly, after I sprinkled the sand on and it dried a bit, I've gone along with my finger and I've just dragged it across this edge. Yeah, just to redefine them. Now, when you're putting it together, remember, yeah, lots of little layers, stack it in slopes, work with your hot glue or your PVA. Now, remember, because it's sort of iggledy-piggledy, as we call it in Britain, yeah, with lots of layers and sort of things that are rocking and ro rolling, what you've got to do is, if you're struggling to get things stuck down, remember, you can stick cocktail sticks in them or barbecue skewers or pins, whether that's just to hold them in place while the hot glue sets or whether you want to fix them there while your PVA sets overnight. Remember, just trim them off and co cover them over. No one will ever know. <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> so, that is our, what you call it, that is our stratified hill done. Now, as with all technical tutorials, yeah, the main content is focused on the actual, what you call it, the technique, which is the stratified hills. What we're going to be doing now is painting it up. And what I'll do is I'll just quickly talk you through that and do it with pictures. We'll get it painted and flocked up so you can see the finished effect. So, here come the pictures. The first stage is to give the rock face a solid grey coating with the dark grey. It's going to take two coats and when you do it, make sure you actually do underneath the overhangs because they're quite often missed. After that, it's time to dry brush it up with a mid-tone grey and then dry it up with a even lighter grey to produce the, the strong highlights. Make sure when you're doing your dry brushing, you always dry brush downwards on the slope. Never dry brush up and highlight underneath the rocks. Always dry brush down to give that natural looking rock effect. After that, it's time to come in with some brown, cover the ground and get some into the, the, into the crevices of your rock face. Once that's done, you can come along and you can start to, what you call it, re dry brush with the grey. This is going over the brown and it will make the brown seem like it's in the recesses. Once again, start with a mid-tone and then simply take it up to your light tone. 
Once all that painting's done, it's time to give it a final highlight with a, a light brown. This is to lighten the gra ground and just to add a little bit more natural colours onto the rocks. Once that's done, it's time to add the flock. In this case, I've gone for a three-tone technique with lighter flocking on the more exposed top surfaces and more darker flocking around the base where, you know, it'd be more moisture and shade, etc. Once the flocking's on, it was time to add the clump foliage that was done with hot glue and then some, what you call it, some turfs. The final stage was to sprinkle on some coarse foam just to break the ground up a bit and give it a ceiling with a, a 1 to 3 ratio of watered down PVA. And once all those jobs are done guys, you are left with this awesome looking stratified hill. Now as I said in this video, watch out, this is about the, the mountain technique. So it's about laying the foam, shaping the foam, fixing it, that filler technique, the stippling, the strikes. Yeah, but we've taken it up to the full finished piece so you can see the final effect. Now as you can see it looks awesome. This is a really simple effect to do. This is obviously only one half of, this is a table edger if you know what I mean, but that's perfectly fine. You can use this techniques on standing out crops, on uh, proper round hills and you can do all sorts of interesting things. You can do rock spires but I'm saving that for a separate tutorial. But to wrap it up, there you go guys, there is an easy way of doing stratified mountain hills, yeah, using just your, what you call it, your, your scraps that remain off with your, what you call it, when you've been building. Yeah, doesn't it look beautiful? Now guys, as always, if you've got any questions on this build, get them down below. Anything you want to add to it, any tips, if you do these sort of things, get them down below. Like it, share it, and as always guys, if you do appreciate these videos, consider the patron thing. Yeah, remember, it keeps the lights on, the cameras rolling, and me in this studio producing content for you guys and helping you with your hobby. And remember, patrons not only get discounts occasionally from my suppliers, they also get early access to all the vids. So if you want to see the vids that are coming out next, they're probably already on Patreon. And if you're not into Patreon yet, there's a link down below to PayPal and my Amazon wish list. If you want to send a bit of cash or if you want to just buy a little gift for the studio, it all helps. So, I will leave you with that. Now guys, uh, links on that side for Patreon and subscription, links on the other side for some cool videos, rocks and all that sort of stuff. And in the meantime, I'll say, I'll see you soon with another vid, guys. All the best, yeah? Terra.